This is the procedure checkoff for initiation of continuous mechanical ventilation using the Siemens Servo 300 ventilator. Step one, verify physician's order. Check the physician's order to make sure that you know what the current ventilator settings are and to identify if there are any new settings or new changes with the ventilator order. You'll also compare the ventilator order to the charted, the last charted ventilator settings by the respiratory therapist in the event that there were protocol changes which do not fall under the need to have a written physician order. So you'll also want to review the patient's chart looking at the key information of why this patient is on the ventilator and how they are doing. Next, gather your equipment. A stethoscope, a pulse oximeter, a cuff manometer gauge in order to measure cuff pressures. Any other equipment that is specific to the measurement uh, or measurements that must be taken during cuff monitor, during ventilator monitoring. So you enter the patient's room, and the first thing you need to do is explain to the patient what you are there for. Hi, Mr. Jones, I'm Dave Zobeck. I'm here to check your ventilator. You may hear some alarms as I go through and check the machine. I'll try and be as quiet as possible. Okay. At the same time, you're going to look at the patient and identify his color, his pulse, you can check the uh, monitor on the, uh, the, uh, the, the pulse oximetry, the pulse rate on the patient's uh, ECG monitor. You'll also look at the rate and rhythm of the ECG, as well as the level of consciousness of that patient. Are they responding to your words? Do they look at you? Do they nod? Do they make contact? Or are they comatose? Next, I suggest that... Uh, you hold on measuring breath sounds or listening to breath sounds until you do the next step which is drain the water out of the tubing. You're either going to milk the tubing in this fashion to the point that it gets to a drain cup or you'll milk the tubing and get it to a low spot where you can disconnect the tubing temporarily and drain it into a bucket. Now, once you've removed the water from the tubing, because water in the tubing may sound like gurgling secretions, then you can listen to the patient's breath sounds, listen for ronchi and secretions noises, and if you hear those, then you'll want to suction the airway you know, using the suction procedure for endotracheal tubes. Okay, once you listen to the breath sounds, suction the patient, now you're going to monitor the patient, monitor the ventilator. And this is where you'll use your charting sheets. Primarily, that's the key information that you want. You'll check the mode. In this case, the mode is at SIMV. The uh, FIO2. Make sure that the FIO2 is correct according to the last written order or protocol. And if it's a protocol, then you must note whether or not the last therapist had the same FIO2 that it's at right at this point. If not, and typically this can happen where the FIO2 is different, then what you're going to do is contact one, the therapist, if he or she is available. The respiratory therapist is the one that you want to talk to first, or the nurse. And lastly, if there is no protocol for any changes or differences in what's charted and what's ordered, lastly would be the physician. We're also going to check the tidal volume. And here in our charting, we do two types of tidal volume. One is ordered tidal volume, and the, the second is a corrected tidal volume. So as these tubings expand, we lose volume, and that volume does not go to the patient. So we will correct the tidal volume 
so that what gets into the patient's lungs is what is ordered. The green numbers here is the measured tidal volume or the calculated tidal volume as well as the calculated minute volume. In the most cases we're talking about approximately 2 ml loss per centimeter water pressure. So in this case the patient's uh, pressure is 32. If the tubing compliance is 2 mLs per centimeter, that's a loss of about 64 mLs of air. So in that case, we would make sure the tidal volume reads, if we wanted to give 400, we want to make sure the tidal volume reads 464 to give a corrected tidal volume. We're going to look at measured and set rate. Set rate is the rate that we want to uh, be sure is consistent with the order. Measured will include any patient efforts. Look at your PEEP and physically look at the dials. And look at the dials and say, okay, the PEEP was supposed to be 10 and the dial is saying 10. And the machine is reading 10. So the pressure reading for PEEP is 10, dials 10, and the order is 10. Is pressure support ordered? In this case, we have a lit uh, light here that indicates pressure support is functioning. Pressure support was 10, it was ordered for 10, and the dial is at 10. Peak pressure is going to be changing depending on the volume that we give the patient, depending on the patient's airway resistance, as well as compliance of the chest and lung. Here you can see that the pressure is 32, and we're going to dial the high pressure limit, this knob, to 42. So this number will change, and if it's not the same as what was previously charted, that's okay. Just make sure that it's not excessively high. We have pause pressure. Whenever peak pressure and pause pressure is the same, you're not measuring pause pressure. So to get a pause pressure, you need to turn on your pause time briefly to 5 or 10%, and then read your pause reading. In this case, at peak is 32 and pause is 30. Then turn the pause off, unless for some reason it's been specifically ordered. Flow rate. We have inspiratory flow rate in liters per second, but to get it to read in liters per minute, we touch standby, and the mode that it's in, and automatically it switches to liters per minute. In this case, point, uh, four point, I'm sorry, 42.8 liters per minute. If we press standby, and the mode's in, you see that we went from a in-story liters per second to liters per minute. We also get the I to E ratio as well as the I time in seconds. Press standby again and it goes out of that mode. I to E is 1 to 3.2. Shut it off, hit standby, and it goes back to liters per second, which is 0.17 liters per second. In story pause, in story I time percent and in story pause time percent are these two controls and you want to record what those settings are. Physically look at them and make sure that the dials have not changed. About flow rate, minute volume, you have a digital actual readout of minute volume this is our minute volume and we adjust our two alarms at two to four above and below. So two to four would be uh, up as high as 11 and as low as 2.8. You can see the exhaled minute volume, or exhaled tidal volume and inhaled tidal volume. As uh, uh, the actual tidal volume for inspired and expired volumes, tidal volumes. Going back to exhaled minute volume, we want to set our high and low minute volume alarms at 
2 to 4 ml over the actual minute volume. So then we have our two high-low minute volume alarms set. We record that number. And our upper pressure limit here is 32, so we want to set our high pressure limit at 10 over that, so it would be set at a 42 of pressure. Here you can see that the pressure is 32, and we're going to dial the high pressure limit, this knob, to 42. That now concludes the uh, setup the monitoring, I should say, of the uh, continuous mechanical ventilation, the uh, Siemens Servo 300 ventilator.